Uh, joining us now is Sheriff Thaddeus Cleveland to talk more about this. He's the sheriff of Terrell County, Texas, also a retired U.S. Border Patrol agent. Uh, sheriff, welcome back. Uh, so a former Border Patrol agent, now you're the sheriff. How would you distinguish your role and responsibility of these two jobs that you've held as it pertains to what we're seeing right now at the border? Howdy, ma'am, first of all, and thank you for having me back. And uh, to distinguish, you know, the differences, um, you know, again, this is my hometown. This is where I grew up. This is a community that, that means the world to me. And uh, and we don't have a crime problem. You know, we're the 10th largest county in the state of Texas. We have 54 miles river with Mexico, and, and we don't have a crime problem. What we have here is a border security problem. And as I've said many times before, we know border security is national security. Indeed. So when you encounter a migrant crossing illegally in your county as the sheriff, what do you do? Yes, ma'am. So I, again, having that his, historical, you know, background as, as a Border Patrol agent, um, you know, we, we rely on partnerships and, and I'm here to be a partner of the U.S. Border Patrol. And, and when I catch illegal aliens, I, I simply just turn them right back over to Border Patrol unless they have some sort of uh, criminal history or they're a smuggler Then I'm going to prosecute them through the state law. And I'd like to, to mention that, you know, the state law has a lot more teeth than our federal law. And that, again, boils back down to this administration controlling not just the Border Patrol, but the assistant U.S. attorneys as well. How would you characterize the partnership right now that you have with Border Patrol agents and the fact that so many agencies seem overwhelmed at the border, given the recent numbers? You, you know, and, and it's a lot. And, and it's unfortunate that, uh, that some people are believing what some of the media outlets um, put forth as far as, you know, really trying to pit the, the Border Patrol agents against our, our state and local officials. That isn't, that isn't the case. I tell you what, what happens here on the ground where the rubber hits the road, when you peel back those, uh, those, those political leadership roles, um, true good work by good men and women are done here on the ground. Um, here in my county, we have a great number of not just DPS, game wardens, as well as um, Texas military forces here helping us out with our, our border security role. Right. I think at the end of the day, we're all on the same team, right? I mean, to try to come up with solutions. And you've talked about solutions, Sheriff, and you say the focus needs to be on areas between ports of entry and a reallocation of resources. Specifically, what does that look like to you? Yes, ma'am. So first and foremost, you know, and as, as they talk about this deal at, at the Senate, we have to secure a border first, and that's in between the ports of entry and our ports of entry. But that's because where we see, you know, some of the largest seizures of fentanyl and other drugs. But, but really between the ports of entry, um, it, it's going to take more infrastructure. And that's not necessarily a, a, a border wall, the complete length of the border. It takes technology. It takes a, a human with the badge on to make those apprehensions. But it also takes partnership. So once we get a new president in office uh, in this upcoming election, um, we're still going to have state resources and local resources helping our border patrol. That's the way it's been as long as I was in the Border Patrol. That's what's going to continue to happen because there's always more work along the border than the U.S. Border Patrol can handle. Not because they're not capable, it's just they're overwhelmed and they will continue to be overwhelmed. And what's the role of things like razor wire or the buoys in the Rio Grande that we've heard so much debate over that they play in helping secure the border and, and shore up some of these areas between ports of entry? Hey, you know, that's a great question because, you know, in Arizona, when I came in the Border Patrol, California, New Mexico, there, there's no river boundary there. It was just a barbed wire fence. And that's where we built the majority of our fencing. Here in Texas, we have the Rio Grande River, but you can see by the pictures you're showing now, people are um, able to easily cross that river. So um, areas that we don't have actual uh, a barricade, the state putting in barbed wire, the state putting in the, uh, the floating um, buoys, those help. Those help funnel traffic to other areas and then allow... Um, those of us who are out there making those apprehensions uh, to have the tactical advantage and to be able to, to handle this situation in a more effective manner. Uh, you have been open about sharing criticism of the Biden administration's policies on this issue. What's your reaction to House Republicans now in the two articles of impeachment against Secretary Mayorkas? Does it seem either party is interested in a solution and is, does this di further divide uh, each side? I, I don't know that it will further divide. And what I mean by that is, yeah. You, you know, it, it's a little, it's a little too late. I, I, I want to see it through. I do, um, but the damage has been done. We're we're already three years into this, three years and a month. Um, you know, and, and for for years I've been saying, you know, Rep Pro Republicans and Democrats both are are to blame for this. You know, this is an easily solved um, catastrophe at our border, and uh, and again, we have to seal off the border. We have to implement. A secure border before we look at any type of immigration reform. A secure border comes first. Yeah.
it's unfortunate right now. It just seems like a political talking point. Um, are you optimistic that uh, prior to November, in, and as you say, a change in the White House, that anything new happens at the border? Do you have confidence in this possible deal today? You know, I, I am an optimist, and uh, my, my glass is always, you know, half full. But I'll tell you, um, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to sit back and, and wait for it. We're going to continue to get out here, help Border Patrol. We, you know, we get out in the mountains here. We get out on the highways and, and we help them every way we can, not just myself, but my deputies. And uh, we're going to continue to, to support our, our state assets as well. What the governor has done um, here in Terrell County and throughout the state has been tremendous. And, and I fully support that. You're on the front lines. Remind me how many deputies you have to patrol your county. I make three of us, so. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, always a pleasure to have you, Sheriff Thaddeus Cleveland. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you. You as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.